aphids. We're gonna talk about these very destructive insects for your ornamentals and for your vegetable garden. Aphids love our crepe myrtles. We have had this trouble over the years, guys, but we've never had the aphid uh, issue affect our garden and um, our ornamentals as bad as they have this year. So uh, we're gonna talk more about them. We're gonna talk about what we've seen work and what we've seen hasn't worked and what we're gonna have to do um, as we continue to garden and plant in these high tunnels to try to stave these things off. See those little fellas on the back of these pepper leaves? They absolutely love our bell peppers and our uh, jalapeno peppers. So these are gonna have to come up. Looky there, but let me show you what they look like under a microscope. So interestingly so, the aphids are not taking to this Arroyo Compoyo, Compoyo plant, pepper plant, as much as they did our jalapenos and um, our bell peppers. So I'm gonna spray this down with some of the insecticidal soap since it looks like we're doing pretty good with them. But did you see the pictures of those little vermin? Um, pretty disgusting. So here are our sweet potatoes, and guys, I'm not seeing them on these as bad, but yes, they are there. Luckily, these are about ready to pull up, and we will not be putting any of this in our compost pile because we need to get rid of these aphids. They will get on your squash. They are often on the underside of your leaf, if they're on the top side, you have a pretty serious infestation. They will get on back of your cucumber leaves. So if you have an ant problem, you most likely have an aphid problem. If you have an aphid problem, you most likely have an ant problem. And the reason is um, the aphids secrete as they're munching on your veggies this honeydew-like substance, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Ants love that, and it attracts them. Ants will even protect the aphids and kill your beneficial insects to keep the aphids safe. See this honeydew secretion? That is what ants love. You can also see it on my crepe myrtle. So many people will take a high pressure uh, hose or your nozzle and they'll spray it off and shoot some of these aphids off. But guess what? They go into the ground and they travel to the next plant. So uh, that is something that we're not gonna be able to do. We've tried that. We've tried the neem oil. We've tried the insecticidal soap. And although it knocks them down a little bit, it doesn't completely kill them. You'll find aphids on the upwind side of your garden. And that means that they are traveling Right now we have a strong south wind. This is the south side of my garden and my high tunnel. And these are aphid infested and they're gonna come out today and we're gonna destroy them. Um, so notice on the upwind side of your garden, that is where you're gonna find your aphid, aphid infestation at first, but it will travel. So it's important to inspect your garden at least twice a week for any kind of aphids or infestation. The quicker you get it, the better off you're gonna be. So we're not seeing them on, on our tomatoes. It's not often that we do, but it doesn't mean that they won't eventually move to uh, some of your more hardy resistant plants and start taking them over as you destroy the other plants. See over here to the north of me and to the west of me. Those are cornfields, and about uh, two or three times a year, we see um, the planes come through and do their spraying and their insecticides. And guess what, guys? If we don't treat our garden as quickly as we see them, those aphids will fly over on the wind, and they can travel up to 600 miles. 
Although they have been around since the beginning of time, just about, um, they did not really start to be a big issue here in Texas until around 2005. That was verified by our USDA rep. There were several things that happened around that time frame uh, that started changing the way we garden and treat our plants. So for the home gardener, neem oil and insecticidal soap is usually your first line of defense. And if you don't have an infestation, you should be pretty good as long as you stay on top of it. Again, you need to inspect your gardens about uh, twice a week and make sure that uh, you're not seeing some kind of infestation. Look for the shiny spots on your leaves. Look for um, some black spots because guess what? Aphids will also bring disease and they'll bring molds from other plants uh, and other crops over to your garden. So guess what else they travel on? They travel on your arms and your hands. So as you're going through and pruning uh, some of your plants, whether it's your pepper plants or whether it's a tree or a fruit tree or something, I can feel them crawling on me. They're on my arms and they're on my hands. And when I go to the next uh, tree or the next plant, chances are they're jumping right off on there. Female aphids, they're asexual. That means they can reproduce on their own. And uh, they can clone off really, really quick and take over your garden. So you've got to be really careful. So some of the steps that we're fixing to take um, is spraying around all the high tunnels and around the garden spaces. We're gonna pull up those pepper plants. They're gonna be destroyed. Uh, we have already pruned back our squashes quite heavily. Any squash that looks like it has an infestation is going today. We've got to get a handle on this, guys. And so some of the, uh, some of the um, insecticides that we have chosen uh, one of them is systemic, and it is called a Dominion, and that's what we're going to use to treat our crepe myrtles and our trees. It is not good for your vegetable garden and your vegetable plants, so you don't want to use anything systemic on uh, your edibles. So what this is going to do is Greg's going to be able to treat at the base of all of our crepe myrtle trees and our trees, and um, it will go down into the root system, and when the aphids start to munch on it, um, it will start to kill them off and uh, this will be an application that happen probably a couple of times a year uh, to try to keep them at bay. We're gonna do it now because we've got that fall garden going in and uh, we'll do it in the spring to uh, try to head off any issues next year. So the two lines of defense that our farmers around here use, especially on their corn crops, are the, uh, are the pimethrin and the permethrin. The pimethrin, I believe, is from the chrysanthemum plant. It is a uh, naturally uh, derived from that. The permethrin is the synthetic form and they seem to be effective somewhat, but guess what? According to um, some of our uh, information folks around here, they're starting to see a little bit of immunity to these insecticides. Um, ladybugs are good if you have a mild case or a mild infestation of the aphids, but guys, you need a heck of a lot of ladybugs um, when you do get heavily infested with um, your aphids. They will get on your flowers. They will get on your watermelons. They will get on your cantaloupes. They will get on your pumpkins. They will really take over your plant. And although a mild infestation normally will not kill a plant, it can grow, guys, if you don't get it under control. And eventually, yes, you will take a hit. See this Johnson grass along the fence line? This also has aphids on it. And uh, Greg has been taking our torch and burning this down to the ground when we're able, but it's been so dry here, we've not been able to do that. So if we do get some rain this week, he will be out here burning this down and uh, destroying all of this as much as possible, as quickly as possible. So what Greg's gonna do today is he is going to use this Dominion, which this will make about 75 to 100 gallons. And he's gonna go around the base of all of our ornamental trees and shrubs and uh, pour it at the base and allow it to get down to the root system so that when um, it goes up through the roots and through the tree and the plant, it will um, kill off the aphids and we can get better control. You do not use this guys on your vegetables, any of your edibles. This is Reclaim. This is for the foliage on each of these trees. So he'll be able to, after he goes through and waters the base of the tree with the Dominion, he'll be able to use the Reclaim on the foliage um, of the trees. And we've got to be very careful to not let this get around um, any of our gardening space. But he can spray some of this around um, 
certain of our garden areas just not on the foliage and we don't want to get it inside the high tunnels but we do want to try to treat around it to kill off anything that uh, we may have washed into the soil that's on on the move so as he's treating the trees the expectation will be um, especially for the foliage spray that they're going to die pretty quick but in case some get away i'll be behind him using the neem oil on my vegetables because they will travel and they will try to find another source of food where they can live and they can reproduce. So we'll be using the neem oil and we'll be using our insecticidal soap. So both of these are effective again, if you have a small infestation, um, but because we are struggling so hard and have been all year with them, um, he's gonna have to pull out the big guns for the ornamentals and uh, around the base of the property to try to stave uh, to try to stave these things off and try to help us for our fall garden and try to help us for our, our spring garden. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. Now you can use the pyrethrin or the permethrin. Um, I think that the, the pyrethrin is, I believe it's safer than the permethrin because the permethrin is a synthetic form, but uh, people do use that on their vegetables as well. We're gonna try to stay away from that and use our natural organic uh, insecticides because we want to stay um, away from any chemicals but uh, guys if it looks like we may have to use one or the other we may have to use one or the other and just uh, get us a good vegetable wash solution uh, to clean our veggies up before we go and consume so to sum it up aphids and ants go together aphids will carry diseases molds to your plants um, aphids you can wash them off your plants, but they tend to live in the soil and come right back and move right on over uh, to new territory. Um, they'll eat up everything you got. If you don't catch them, there are certain plants that, uh, that they don't jump on right away, but they will eventually if they lose their food source. And uh, they're very destructive and they've been very destructive to us this year. You can see I'm gonna have to pull up all those pepper plants that seem to be doing okay, but guys, they're infested. And I can't chance it. I just cannot chance it on getting in this high tunnel and in that new one that's going up. Another thing I want to note is this is my tower of power. This is my herb and tea garden. Not seeing it affect any of these. So maybe if I, I learn a little bit better on certain herbs in the garden, that might get me some preventative next year. But right now my herbs are looking good and so are my teas. So say a prayer for us. I hope that this video helped you. I hope that you understand um, what to look for, when to look for it, how often to look for it, which is twice a week, and to start treating immediately. And if it looks like you have one plant that's infested, because sometimes they do stick with one host plant, pull it up and get rid of it and treat your others with some kind of insecticidal soap and uh, with your neem oil to try to head it off. But we're fixing to have to use the big guns. So stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on how this works. Take care. God bless. And I got to get to starting some seeds. Be sure and hit that subscribe button.